It's really hard work, is it, Sean? Hard work climbing up a mountain. I don't think I'll be able to reach the top. I don't. I don't. I've done it! Yay! I don't want to reach the top. I've done it! Yay! We've reached the top of the mountain! Hooray! Have we conquered the mountain? We've conquered the mountain. We've made it to the top. Have you ever conquered a mountain before? Reached to the top? It's quite hard work. Rosie's even having a turn, but I think it's too hard for Rosie. <laughs> it's too hard. It's so hard to get to the top of the mountain. But we've conquered it. Well done. Well, today, you can stay there. Uh, today, well, here we go, Rosie. Today, we are going to see that Jesus conquered something. So let's stay on listening for the rest of our story to see how that happened. But for the moment, we're going to sing our first song which is Easter Friday, which slightly gives away what he conquered. But let's have a go. So Easter Friday, let's sing our first song. It's easy to feel sad when we think of Jesus dying on the cross. We can be happy. We have to start on the floor. You and, me. and that wasn't the end. Easter Friday, Jesus has died. All his friends are sad and they cry. Sunday. of two ways to live and here they are. Can you remember what they are? Have you been practicing drawing them? And whilst I remember, can you make sure that definitely next time you watch, you have your paper and your pen ready for tea time together? <laughs> Let's move you out of the way, Rosie can go fast. Um, so here we go, picture number one. This is what we had to start off with. We had God, the crown up at the top, God made the world with us in charge of the world, but underneath God. Picture number two. Uh-oh. This is where it all went wrong. We crossed out God because we don't want him to be in charge of us. And we put the crown over our own head because we want to be in charge of our own lives. And that is sad and bad news. And because we have ignored God, the just punishment for that is death. God says that because we ignore him, we will all die. And that is the punishment that we deserve for ignoring him. Then last week, we had picture number four. God did not leave it like that. God sent his son Jesus, J for Jesus, who came and lived the perfect life. And he died on the cross instead of us. So instead of us dying, Jesus died instead. And that means that we can be friends with Jesus. He took the punishment that we deserve. Now, I'm not going to show you picture number five yet. I'm going to show you picture number five in a minute. So, Jesus has died on the cross, but Jesus didn't stay dead. The Bible talks about Jesus conquering death. You know how we conquered the mountain? That means we got to the top of the mountain. We beat the mountain. Jesus conquered death and it's a little bit like Jesus had a fight with death and you know who won? Jesus won because Jesus didn't stay dead. He conquered death. He beat death. Death has no hold on Jesus. He rose to life again. Now on Easter Sunday morning, that was the first day that Jesus was alive again, three ladies were walking to the tomb and well, Jesus was dead. He was put in the tomb and, well, no one expected him to be alive because he was dead. And normally when someone dies, well, well everybody, they, they stay dead again. But these three women, when they got to the tomb, Jesus wasn't there. He was alive. He was gone. And then later on, 
Jesus, he saw everybody. People saw him and touched him. Mm -hmm. Jesus ate. He lived on earth for 40 days with people again. And they were able to see him because Jesus was alive again. It was such a surprise. But do you know what the funny thing was? That Jesus had actually told them that he was going to rise again. Jesus had told them that he was going to come alive again. But no one really understood that. So now when we look back, we can see that Jesus had told them he was going to be alive again. But it was such a surprise when he was alive again because no one expected it. So... Jesus is alive. And do you know what also is great news about the fact that Jesus is alive? It shows us that God accepted Jesus' death. Let me show you those two pictures again. Do you remember picture three? The punishment for ignoring Jesus is we die. And Jesus died instead of us. But how do we know that God accepted Jesus' punishment? Because he was alive again. Because Jesus was alive again, that shows us that God accepted it. So death really has gone and we, if we trust in Jesus, will rise to be in heaven with Jesus again. And that is wonderful, wonderful news. Let me show you the picture for today. Are you ready? Picture number five is this. Where is Jesus now? He is in heaven with God. Jesus, he didn't die again. He went up through the clouds and he went into heaven, Jesus is now in heaven where he will never die again. And if you believe in Jesus, we will die here on earth, but we will live forever with Jesus in a new heaven and a new earth with him. That's what the Bible teaches. Jesus, he rose from the dead. So that is picture number five. Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going to show you these pictures one more time and I'd like you to see if you can write them out and see if we can remember them all for next week. So here we go. Picture number one, God made the world. Picture number two, we put the crown on our own heads and ignore God. Picture number three, the just punishment for that is that we have to die. Picture number four, but Jesus died instead of us. Jesus died on the cross because he loved us. Picture number five, Jesus rose from the dead showing that we can have new life showing that his punishment was accepted. This is the great news that Christians believe. This is the gospel, the good news that is available to all of us. Now we have one picture next, picture number six, that we are gonna see next week. So make sure you watch again next week to see what the last picture is. Right then, we are gonna sing our next song. Because Jesus is alive again and we can have new life, how does that make us feel? It gives us joy. So we're gonna sing our song, it gives us joy, 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 joy down in our hearts. Come on, everyone. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. because that's how he was able to raise Jesus from the dead because he is powerful. God is so powerful, big, strong, mighty. Here we go. 
My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. Let's sing it again, shall we? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's true. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big. <coughs> All right. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. That's true! That is true. God is so powerful to be able to raise Jesus from the dead. That is wonderful news. Let's say our prayer together. You can stay there if you like, but let's do our fingers for our prayer. Ready? One, <clears throat> two, three. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so powerful that you raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus became alive again. What wonderful, wonderful news. Thank you, God, that you accepted Jesus' death and that Jesus is alive again so that we can be friends with you. Help us to feel that joy that Jesus is alive and we can be friends with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Right, and we're going to do our memory verse. We learned a new one last week and it goes like this. If I say it first of all and then we'll see. So, hang on girls, let's sit down to your uh, here we go. For Christ suffered, we said he died, for Christ suffered once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. Hang on a sec, you guys go sit over there because you're too distracting. <laughs> there we go. Right then, let's do our reverse again. For Christ suffered once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. Last week we said that what means? We said what that means. Jesus is righteous. He's the only one that's right with God. And we are unrighteous. We don't do what God wants us to do. But he swapped with us. So when God looks at us, he sees that we're righteous. Anyway, let me go back to the verse. For Christ suffered once for all. He died once on the cross. The righteous for the unrighteous. Why? To bring you to God. I'm going to do it again without interrupting. I keep interrupting myself. For Christ suffered once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. And that's from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. I'm going to do it one more time. Do it with me, because it's great to learn these Bible verses. Here we go. For Christ suffered once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 18. Wonderful. That is a great verse. And we will be doing it one more time next week. And we'll also see our sick picture of our two ways to live. So well done, everybody. Remember, next time you're doing something hard and you hang on. Next time you do something hard and you conquer it, remember that Jesus conquered death. Right. Bye everybody.